यशोदनंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यमुना तीरा वनचारे यमुना तीरा वनचारी जय जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा जय गोपी जन वल्लभ त्रिवर धी जय गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरवर यशोदनंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यमुना तीरा वनचारी यमुना तीरा वनचारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी
जय ओम विष्णुपाद परम हंस परिवराज कचार्य स्टोतर शत श्री श्रीमद हिस डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज शिल प्रभुपाद की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद परम हंस परिवराज कचार्य स्टोतर शत श्री श्रीमद हिस डिवाइन ग्रेस शिल भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी महाराज प्रभुपाद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय नामाचार्य श्रील हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास दिगौर भक्त वृंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरि गोवर्धन की जय श्री वृंदावन धाम की जय श्री नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की जय गंग माई जमुन माई की जय तुलसी देवी भक्ति देवी की जय श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जय ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरांग ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट प्रायद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवति नैष्ठिकी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोप कुमाराय गोविंदय नमो नम तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो वन चैप्टर ट्वेल्व टेक्स नंबर ट्वेल्व तथा सर्व गुणोदर्के सानुकूल ग्रहोदय यज्ञ वंशधर वंशधर पांडुर्भूय पांडुर्वजसा तत सर्वगुणोदर्के सानुकूल ग्रहोदय जज्ञ वंशधर पांडुर भूय पांडुर्वजसा तत सर्वगुणोदर्के सानुकूल ग्रहोदय यज्ञ वंशधर पांडुर भूय पांडुर्वजस तत सर्वगुणोदर्के 
सानुकूलाग्रहोदय यज्ञ वंशधर पांडो भूय पांडुर्वजसा माताजीज ततः देरपॉन सर्व ऑल गुण गुड गुड साइंस उधर के हैविंग ग्रेजुअली इवॉल्ड स अनुकूल ऑल फेवरेबल ग्रहोदय कॉन्स्टलेशन ऑफ स्टेलर इन्फ्लुएंस यज्ञ टुक बर्थ वंशधर वंशधर हियर एपरेंट पांडो ऑफ पांडु भूय बीन पांडु एक्जैक्टली लाइक पांडु ओजसा बाय प्रावस ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपोर्ट बाय श्रील प्रभुपाद Thereupon, when all the good signs of the zodiac gradually evolved, the heir apparent of Pandu, who would be exactly like him in prowess, took birth. Purport: Astronomical calculations of stellar influences upon a living being are not suppositions, but are factual, as confirmed in Shrimad Bhagavatam. Every living being is controlled by the laws of nature at every minute. <clears throat> Just as a citizen is controlled by the influence of the state, the state laws are grossly observed, but the laws of material nature being subtle to our gross understanding cannot be experienced grossly. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, every action of life produces another reaction. which is binding upon us and only those who are acting on behalf of yagya vishnu are not bound by reactions our actions are judged by the higher authorities the agents of the world and thus we are awarded bodies according to our activities the law of nature is so subtle that every part of our body is influenced by the respective stars and a living being obtains his working body to fulfill his terms of imprisonment by the manipulation of such astronomical influence a man's destiny is therefore ascertained by the birth time constellation of stars and a factual horoscope is made by a learned astrologer it is a great science and mis- misuse of a science does not make it useless maharaj parikshit or even the personality of godhead appear in certain constellations of good stars 
and thus the influence is exerted upon the body, thus born at an auspicious moment. The most auspicious constellation of stars take place during the appearance of the Lord in, his, in this material world and is specifically called Jayanti, a word not to be abused for any other purposes. Maharaj Parikshit was not only a great Kshatriya emperor but also a great devotee of the Lord. Thus he cannot take his birth at any inauspicious moment. As a proper place and time is selected to receive a respectable personage, so also to receive such a personality as Maharaj Parikshit was especially cared for by the Supreme Lord. A suitable moment is chosen when all good stars assemble together to exert their influence upon the king. Thus he took his birth just to be known as the great hero of Srimad Bhagavatam. The suitable arrangement of astral influences is never a creation of man's will, but is the arrangement of the superior management of the agency of the Supreme Lord. Of course, the arrangement is made according to the good or bad deeds of the living being. Herein lies the importance of pious acts performed by the living being. Only by pious acts can one be allowed to get good health, good education and beautiful features. The samskars of the school of Sanatan Dharma, man's eternal engagement, are highly suitable for creating an atmosphere for taking advantage of good stellar influences. And therefore, Garbhadhan Samskar, or the first seedling purificatory process prescribed for the higher castes, is the beginning of all pious acts to receive a good, pious, and intelligent class of men in human society. There will be peace and prosperity in the world due to good and sane population only. There is hell and disturbance only because of the unwanted, insane populace addicted to sex indulgence. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Swapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupahakada Mahiyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitan Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarupyascha Kripa Sindhupya Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 
हरे कृष्णा सो कृष्णा इज एक्सट्रीमली काइंड and shila prabhupad mentioned many times he is always making arrangements for the welfare of living entities who have fallen from the spiritual world who have rebelled against him but like a loving father he is always trying to bring them back and as a loving father he always wants to see his children happy and the science of astrology is uh, one such arrangement where if we have a good astrologer something could be predicted so that the human being can take certain precautions every human being is blessed with free will that means no matter what is what uh, is in store as our destiny by our choices things can be changed so astrology can predict if we have a good astrologer to certain extent and then a human being can take certain steps to rectify the situation but when it comes to what shila prabhupad spoke about astrology what how should devotees deal with it although there is so much astrology in this uh, uh, purport but shila prabhupada is simply addressing the point which is made in the verse it is talking about parikshit maharaj's birth and shila prabhupada does mention when krishna's name giving ceremony is done by garga acharya there also shila prabhupada mentions that it is the duty of every responsible father to get a horoscope of his child prepared but that's about it and even shila prabhupada's horoscope was made where it was predicted he would travel across the world he would cross the oceans and build 108 temples when he turns 70 so how do we resolve this of course there are shila prabhupada's statements in this purport also prabhupada doesn't recommend he is not uh, you can say endorsing that devotees follow is simply addressing the point but nowhere in shila prabhupada's life as a devotee how should we resolve this if astrology this question comes up we we don't have to uh, think too much we simply have to see how our guru parampara dealt with it how lord chaitanya mahaprabhu who came to teach us through his own example how he dealt with it did he get into this or did uh, shila prabhupad give it uh, any importance so there are certain statements uh, so shila prabhupad does mention a horoscope must be prepared but then nothing beyond that and we see here pandavas are making all the arrangements to welcome parikshit maharaj and getting his horoscope prepared but then we don't see parikshit maharaj when he was cursed by because he's a pure devotee of the lord when he was cursed by shringi we don't see him running around and consulting astrologers what should i do now i have been cursed can i avoid it he simply took shelter of krishna he simply accepted it as krishna's mercy even though pandavas are following this important sanskar which is recommended but when the pandavas lost all their kingdom we don't see them going around consulting astrologers why did we lose this uh, how should we get it back or when they are living in the forest they are not going around asking although there were countless sages who were visiting them in the forest throughout or these planets are ruled by different uh, personalities demigods arjuna went to the heavens also he met all of them but nowhere in mahabharat we find a reference where arjuna is consulting the presiding deities of those planets why did it happen why did we lose it throughout pandavas life we see uh, they were completely faithful to krishna they took shelter of krishna 
And that's what Srila Prabhupada also taught. He came to give Bhagavat Dharma. Yes, human beings are blessed. Uh, and Prabhupada is mentioning it's a science. The planetary influences can have an impact on a person's life. But when it comes to a devotee, Prabhupada says, how should a devotee deal with it? He also gave the example of his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur, whenever he was consulted. He said, astrology, my Guru Maharaj was a great astrologer. One of the most prominent, not one of the most, he was the most prominent astrologer and astronomer. But he gave it up so that he could practice Krishna consciousness exclusively. So that's why they are known as Acharyas who come to teach by their own example. So we don't have to think much. What did our Acharyas do? That's it. A devotee has to impl- simply think like that. So there are certain quotes by Srila Prabhupada when he was asked uh, about astrology on different occasions. This is in Bombay, 1974, 24th March. Tamal Krishna Maharaj is asking Srila Prabhupada, what is the position of astrology in Krishna consciousness? Srila Prabhupada says, Astrology is a science. Krishna consciousness has nothing to do with astrology. But it is the general custom that as soon as a child is born, the astrologers come. That is the Indian system, Vedic system. So again, Prabhupada is making this reference that when a child is born, a horoscope is prepared. Boston, 1969, 3rd May. Regarding astrology, he is replying to a disciple. You should not listen to any of these so-called astrologers. Strictly avoid. Don't even see them. What is the use of seeing them? Astrology is meant for the materialist. But a spiritualist does not care for the future. Everything is dependent upon Krishna. So where is the necessity of astrology? The devotee's principle is, let there happen anything as Krishna desires. Let me remain sincere, devotee, that's all. Your devotee is never interested in this astrology. So continue nicely with your deity worship there and read my books very carefully. And without fail, chant 16 rounds on your beats daily. And then there is another letter to a devotee called Devamaya Prabhu. Please accept my obeisance. It's in 1975. I am in due receipt of your letter dated June 6, 1975, and have noted the contents. Now, no, you should not bother with all this nonsense. Astrology will not save you at the time of death. My Guru Maharaj was a great, great astrologer and astronomer, but he gave it all up. It is meant for the karmis. We have no interest in such things. Then in the book called Signs of Self-Realization, one person interviewing Prabhupada, he's asking, then the question may be raised that if destiny cannot be checked, then why not let every newborn child simply run around like an animal and whatever is destined to happen to him will happen. Srila Prabhupada said, no, the advantage is that you can train him spiritually. Therefore it is said, the seva hetuhu, you should engage your energy for self-realization. Devotional service. Krishna consciousness cannot be checked. Just as material destiny cannot be checked, your advancement in spiritual life cannot be checked if you endeavor for it. And then Prabhupada adds, Actually Krishna will change destiny, but only for his devotees. He says, Aham Twam Sarva Pape Bhyo Moksha Shyami. I shall give you all protection from all reactions of sin- sinful activities. So, like that, Srila Prabhupada always cautioned devotees not to tread this path and simply be dependent on Krishna. And it is extremely simple. To the degree we lack faith in Krishna, to that very degree we have faith in other things or sciences like astrology. Now, we may not be pure devotees, but at least 
till we become pure devotees, we simply follow the guidance of the pure devotees, and that is as good. Like Srila Prabhupada said, there are two types of pure devotees. One, of course, we know the Nitya Siddhas who are thoroughly purified at heart. And second, he says, those who are fully surrendered. So they may not be pure, but they are fully surrendered. And that means fully surrendering to the instructions of the Guru Parampara. So there is an incident in Vrindavan. There was a devotee of the name Vishal Prabhu. And he was looking for some yantra which he could wear around his neck. He had seen many Brajavasis wearing it also. It was a kind of a charm that he could wear which had uh, inscribed the mantras related to all the demigods, the prominent demigods. So he wanted to wear this. But he wanted to have it from an astrologer. So without consulting Prabhupada, he just went around and he found one astrologer and whom he thought was nice because he was also carrying a bead bag and he was wearing a tilak. So he thought, this, this seems to be good, I can connect with this, looks like a Vaishnava. So he got it. And this person told him to do certain rituals at 12 noon and do this, do that. So this person comes back and Brahmanand Maharaj at that time was serving Prabhupada. He sees this unusual ornament around Vishala Prabhu's neck. He said, what is this all about? He said, this is what has happened and uh, this will protect me from the influence of these planets. So Prabhupada, he said, Brahmanand Maharaj said, Prabhupada have always warned us against this. We don't need this. Devotees don't need all this. But Vishala Prabhu said, but I would like to consult with Prabhupada on this. So let me go. Can I have an appointment? And he went to Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, we don't need, we are devotees. Devotees don't need this. And with a slight kick of his, Krishna can annihilate one lakh Rahu planets. <laughs> Prabhupada told him straight away. So why do you worry about this? Yes, these planets have influence, but uh, these planets are presided over by the demigods. So if a devotee also has to uh, take shelter of them, or take shelter of astrology means taking shelter of demigods. And Krishna never liked it. Even when he was in Rindavan, uh, the episode of Govardhan Leela, he saw, why should my devotees be serving Indra when I am here? So Krishna is like the king. When we have a direct connection with the king, then we don't have to worry about these things. Of course, otherwise, Srila Prabhupada always, whenever, whether it was a Garbhdhan Samskar or whatever, Prabhupada said, do simple. Just keep it simple. Chant 54 rounds before a boy and a girl, after they get married and they decide to have a child, before that they should chant 54 rounds of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. That means purifying the consciousness. But depending on the consciousness of the uh, two, the would-be parents, a particular soul is attracted. So bringing a child into this world is a science. So there are samskars. There used to be 64 samskars and people only follow four or five nowadays. But samskars are meant for purification. But they are not beyond Krishna. They are meant to purify us, to take us towards Krishna, gradually. But for Krishna devotees, direct engagement in Krishna's service, chanting the holy names, studying or hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, worshipping the deity, that is enough. So yes, uh, these samskars, Prabhupada says, uh, uh, are important, but how we follow them? A devotee follows in a Krishna conscious way. In the uh, Puranas, the story of how uh, the samskaras could be helpful or how the consciousness actually, samskaras are meant to alter the consciousness, purify the consciousness. And uh, as Srila Prabhupada mentions, if unwanted population comes into this world, it causes disturbance. If there is pious population, then there is 
so much prosperity. How the consciousness of a person can alter what type of soul comes into this world uh, is uh, exemplified by these two episodes. We have the example of Kashyap Muni in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So the astral influences, as Srila Prabhupada mentions here, depending on what activities we commit or we engage in, in this life, so a particular astral influence acts uh, upon the soul, upon us, and then gives, a, um, gives us next birth. And based on that arrangement of the uh, planets, a horoscope is calculated. And so, uh, the timing really matters. The timing matters. So, Kashyap Muni, he's sitting for his uh, evening rituals, and at that time, Mother Diti approaches him and uh, for a union, but Kashyap Muni said, this is not the right time, this is specially meant for worship, and Lord Shiva is moving around at this time, so he may get angry. But she forces him and they unite and because it was the, it was not a good time astrologically for such an activity, astronomically. So in the house of a great Rishi, two great demons are born, Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha, because it was not the right time. So how these things do matter. And then we also have the example of Hiranyakashipu. He wanted powers from Lord Brahma. He goes to a mountain, starts performing austerities. And as he is doing so, and uh, we have seen this usually happen, whenever somebody performs tapasya or begins to perform tapasya, some bell starts ringing in Indraloka and he gets some signals. And every time somebody performs tapasya, Indra starts thinking this person is performing austerities to uh, take control of the heavens. Then he sends someone to spoil that person's austerities. So Hiranyakashipu's case, Indra was justified. And he got really worried. So Narad Muni was there, he said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. So Hiranyakashipu is standing on his toe with his hands up, performing tapasya, strictly focused. And Narad Muni takes the form of a bird. And he comes to him, close to his ears, and he loudly chants, Narayana! And then he flies away. So Hiranyakashipu's tapasya breaks. And then after some time, he again focuses, again Narad Muni as a bird comes. He said, Narayana! <laughs> this happened quite a few times, and Hiranyakashipu said, Hell with my tapasya, I'm going, I'm not doing it. And he goes back home, and uh, his wife, Kadru, what was the name of Nikashipu's wife? Kayadu. She is surprised, her husband has come back home so early today. <laughs> and she is, uh, and he is like so frustrated. These demigods, they didn't let me do tapasya. They are always creating impediments. They are just chanting Narayan, Narayan, Narayan. And in that state, uh, his mind was only occupied with this word Narayan, Narayan, Narayana. Because he had heard the pure chanting of the Lord's name from a pure devotee like Narayan, Narada. He is always reciting the Lord's name. So it has that impact. So depending on who we are hearing from, whether it's the Lord's name or Katha, uh, we get benefited. The impact is created uh, to the degree a person is pure. It's not that Anybody who speaks, so many people speak from Bhagavatam, so many people chant Krishna's names, but that doesn't mean that they will have the same, they will create the same transformation in their audience. It's all about transformation of the heart. That is why it is recommended by Sanatan Goswami himself, who is the Guru of Vrindavan. Tomorrow is Guru Purnima, his disappearance day, and the entire Vrindavan does Parikrama in his honor, because it was very dear to him, Govardhan Parikrama. 
He says, he quotes from the Puranas that one should not hear Harikatha and Harinam from the mouth of a non-devotee. Now this is uh, something revolutionary. Harikatha and Harinam is purifying, but he is saying, do not hear Harikatha or Harinam from the mouth of a non-devotee because it will act like poison. Just like a milk which is supposed to nourish our body when it is touched by a serpent becomes poisonous. Similarly, Harikatha or Harinam from the mouth of a non-devotee will not increase our bhakti but it may just completely uh, dry our heart of all the bhakti that we have. Because it is not the words that the person is speaking, it is the consciousness behind the words that permeates through the atmosphere and enters our heart and purifies it or dries it up, depending on who we are hearing from. So when a person is saturated with Krishna consciousness, even his jokes, even his gesture, even his smile will make us Krishna conscious. But if a person does not have Krishna consciousness, he may speak from Bhagavatam, he may speak the holy names, he may sing most beautifully, it will not have any impact. Rather, a person will maybe become more materialistic. That's why Prabhupada always warned against hearing from the professional reciters of Bhagavat. And also, we have to be careful not to hear from professional singers who may be singing bhajans, may be singing the holy names, and people pay them so much, but there is hardly any benefit. Like nowadays, it's become a norm. Whenever somebody dies, people have a prayer meet and they would call professional singers who charge you money and they will come and sing and go away. But that does not help the soul, nor does it help the audience. The Lord does not manifest His mercy through a non-devotee, through a professional reciter. And ultimately the whole effort is to, why do we go to a satsang, why do we hear from the Bhagavad Gita, why do we hear some, somebody singing, so that our hearts can be purified, so that we can be uh, blessed with the Lord's grace. But that grace does not manifest through non-devotees. So we have to look for the essence. Whereas if a sincere devotee, even if he is not a very good orator, even if he is not a very powerful singer, but he is a sincere devotee, sincerely practicing Krishna consciousness, his few words or his uh, not so good singing also will transform people's hearts. We had Srila Prabhupada's god brother, Akinchin Krishnadas Babaji Maharaj. He would constantly chant Krishna's name. Nobody ever saw him sleeping. Nobody ever saw him not chanting. And he was not like a very powerful singer from the Bollywood standard or some musical standard. But whenever he would take Mridanga in his hand, sing bhajans, they were so saturated with love and devotion, people would just start crying in devotion. They would experience their devotion growing exponentially. So when a person is saturated with the Krishna consciousness, Bhagavatam itself mentions Tadvag Visargo Janadag Viplavo. Is that the verse where Srila uh, Prabhupada also quotes that we may not be perfect? Narad Muni is mentioning this that the narrations about the Lord, the glories of the Lord when sung, even though they are not perfectly composed, but if they are sung sincerely, they have the potency to create a revolution in the lives of the misdirected civilization. Whereas other things, however perfect they may be, they will just be on a mental plane. They will not cause any transformation. So, we have to be very careful who we are hearing from. And whoever we are hearing from, that's what we become. That much advancement we make. So the Lord, the Bhakti is not mechanical. Just because somebody is chanting, he will advance also, that's not a guarantee. Just because somebody is hearing Bhagavat, he will advance, make advancement also, that's not the guarantee. Somebody spent 20 years in Bhakti and he is supposed to be supremely advanced, no guarantee. Because Krishna is Swarat and is Bhavagrahi Janardana. He is mainly concerned with the intention. He is mainly concerned with the 
bhav how sincerely we are trying to practice externally so many people may be doing but all are making different advancement a pure devotee of the lord may be speaking bhagavatam and everyone in the audience here is hearing the same thing but all of them will receive different benefit depending on how eagerly sincerely they are hearing the example is in uh, bhagavat mahatmya we have the story of uh, a brahman named atmadev he gets married to a lady called dhunduli and she is very cruel hearted very quarrelsome cunning he gets and he didn't have a child so he got really frustrated he went into the forest to take sanyas never to come back he meets a sadhu sadhu feels compassion he gives him a fruit give it to your wife she will be blessed with a very very divine child the wife doesn't want to get pregnant she is thinking oh if i eat this fruit i'll have to bear a child my weight will increase what if there is a fire in the house how will i run away what if thieves come and try to steal my belongings how will i catch them so i will not become a mother she consulted her sister who was equally cunning she said don't worry i am pregnant i'll give you my child you give me some money till then you, till then you can fake it as if you are pregnant pregnant put a pillow on your belly and that's what happened in due course of time the the fruit was given to a cow nobody ate that in due course of time dunduli's sister gave birth to a child dunduli took it took him gave her some money so she gave birth to a child who was named dhundukari and the cow also gave birth because it was by the blessings of the great sage they couldn't go in vain she gave birth to a person who's a, an effulgent child but his ears were like that of a cow the body of a human so he was named gokarna right from his birth he was very austere pure respectful gentle humble all the divine qualities and this dhundukari born from uh, a cunning mother was extremely cunning his childhood play was to kill little children like king vena he would just kill them trouble everyone so now atmadev has had enough he decided to renounce the world went into the forest never to come back meanwhile dhundukari troubled his mother so much she committed suicide he started living with the prostitutes and spending his wealth and one day the prostitutes figured out his wealth is not stable so they put burning coal in his mouth when he was sleeping and killed him and buried him right there itself in the house and ran away with his wealth he became a ghost a brahma rakshas and ghost when a person gets a ghostly body they are constantly afflicted with hunger thirst they suffer so much but they can't do anything about it they can't even speak to anyone so meanwhile all this while gokarna had gone on a pilgrimage he he had also received the news about his brother passing away he comes back he sees some activity happening some paranormal activity within his house and he didn't know what it was so he had some ganga jal in his kamandalo he threw it in that direction and suddenly somebody spoke he said who are you he said i am your brother do something because i become a ghost said ghost but i did tarpan for you in uh, gaya ji i did shrad for you you should have been liberated he said no i am so sinful even if you do thousand shrads for me at gaya i won't get liberated so please help me i am suffering i am your brother so gokarna starts thinking how to help him now this was the ultimate remedy so he was very austere he directly spoke to sun god vivaswan that how can i help him and sun god vivaswan he is a great devotee he said you should recite bhagavatam that is the only way out so he requested all the villagers to organize a bhagavat saptah for 7 days and dhundukari as a ghost resided in a bamboo stick a bamboo tree which has knots every day the bhagavat katha would, would get over one knot would explode so gradually he was getting liberated 
and on the seventh day, the seventh knot broke and a, and a effulgent personality came out of that bamboo tree. And everyone saw a, celest, a plane from Vaikuntha with Vishnu Dutas descended, took Dundukari, uh, who boarded the plane and they went back to the spiritual world. Now the villagers, they were uh, surprised and they told Gokarna, you are partial. You just sent your brother to go by Kuntha. We also want to go. We also heard Bhagavat for seven days. We also were sitting here. So Gokarna said, yes, you also heard, he also heard. But the eagerness and the intensity with which he was hearing, you all didn't have. Therefore, you all didn't get the same benefit. It's not mechanical. Then they said, no, 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 we, this time again you speak, we also want to do it. So again he recited for seven days and the, at the end of the seventh day, all of them went back to the spiritual world in a, a Vaikuntha airplane which had descended to take them back. So therefore, who we are hearing from is crucial. It's not about external, it's about the purity of the heart how well someone is singing, how well someone is speaking, that's all material. It's the purity of the heart. So, Srila Prabhupada, he was so saturated with Krishna consciousness, so a devotee, pure devotee doesn't even have to say anything to make, turn somebody into a devotee. Every gesture, because he's saturated with Krishna consciousness, every action, every gesture is carrying that Krishna consciousness, his consciousness behind that. Srila Prabhupada is speaking to the hippies about Lord Chaitanya, Sanatana Goswami. They didn't know anything about it, but it was not the words that were creating that impact, it was the consciousness, Prabhupada's purity behind those words that created that revolution. And then gradually they came to know who Sanatana Goswami is, who Lord Chaitanya is. One disciple of Prabhupada, I forgot the name, he came to hear, like many would come and hear, he sat at the back. And Prabhupada was conversing with someone, and Prabhupada is sitting, he, he was ha eating some fruit, which had seeds. So Prabhupada would chew on that fruit, and the seed he would just throw like, like this. And it would form a perfect trajectory, and fall into a dustbin. Prabhupada was throwing the seed like that. And seeing that only this person became a devotee. He is thinking that only this person can do that. <laughs> Krishna consciousness, saturated with Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada didn't even have to speak a word. His Holiness Sachinandan Swami Maharaj mentions in the initial days he was facing some problems in the Brahmacharya ashram. So he wanted to leave, but then he heard Prabhupada was coming. So he wanted to have his darshan once. So he went with other devotees to receive him at the airport. And he's also uh, standing in the third or fourth row. There were many, many devotees on both the sides. And from the aisle, Prabhupada is going. And as Prabhupada is going, devotees are performing Kirtan. And then suddenly Prabhupada stopped right in that uh, line where Sachinandan Maharaj was, standing behind three, four devotees. Prabhupada stopped, looked at him, and just gave a smile. And then he walked away. That's it. And that smile, Sachinandan Maharaj said, saved me I'm, and I'm here, still serving in the movement. So it is the consciousness. That's why Sanatana Goswami says, he's not being fanatic. It is the consciousness. Everyone may be speaking Hari Katha, Hari Nam, but how much sincerity is there in the heart? With what intention the person is singing or speaking? That will create a revolution or no revolution, a transformation in the hearts of those who are hearing. So, Hiranyakashipu, he had heard Narayan, Narayan from a pure devotee like that. So therefore his consciousness was only Narayan, 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 Narayan. And when he united with his wife Kayadu in that state only, so a soul like Prahlad was attracted to Kayadu's womb. Because the consciousness was Narayana, Narayana, Narayana. So a pure devotee of Narayana was attracted. So how important is the consciousness when we want to bring a soul into this world? 
So in a, when the consciousness is not pure, the timing is not pure, is not the right timing, even in the home of a great sage, one of the Sapta Rishis, Kashyap Rishi, demons get born, get, they, they take birth. And in the house of a great demon, a pure devotee of the Lord is born because the consciousness at that time is perfect. So, but Srila Prabhupada, in Kali Yuga, he mentioned all these rituals, samskars, it's very impractical to follow. He has given us the easiest path. Just chant Hare Krishna, recite Bhagavatam, that's it. So, we don't have to worry too much about the details of samskar, the details of astrology. As he said, simply by clapping our hands in the Kirtan of the Lord, the palms on our hand change. The destiny can change. Krishna can change it. As he mentions in the purport. So all we have to do is simply be faithful to Krishna, take shelter of Krishna, and then whatever comes, we accept it as the Lord's mercy. Krishna can change destiny also. Otherwise, we have to live according to our destiny, whatever is destined for us. But Krishna factor is greater than destiny, the will of the providence. And if we simply take shelter of him, we rise above destiny. If we don't take shelter of him, we have to fight against destiny. And destiny is much superior to us. So the simplest path Srila Prabhupada has given, through his own example, our other Acharyas, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they simply focused on Hari Nam, Hari Katha and Hari Puja. Because Krishna is the king. His devotional service, he is not governed by the planets. The planets are under his uh, rulership. He is the king. And when Krishna comes into picture, when Krishna comes into this world, Srimad Bhagavatam mentions the 10th canto, when Krishna was about to appear, all the planets adjusted their positions to make the most uh, auspicious formation. So when Krishna comes, they adjust themselves. Krishna does not have to adjust according to them. And whoever is blessed by Krishna, therefore they also have to adjust accordingly. In the case of Parikshit Maharaj, the most powerful, uh, most auspicious moment was selected. Krishna always reserves the best for his devotees. It's not that devotees are affected by that, but coming into this world, Krishna made sure that even those things were adjusted. Like many people go to holy places to leave their bodies, then only liberation is guaranteed. But Srila Prabhupada, he never um, encouraged. He said, devotee, wherever he dies, he doesn't have to worry. In the Bhagavad Gita itself, Krishna talks about two paths in the 8th chapter. Uh, the path of darkness, the path of light, when a soul comes back, when a soul doesn't come back. But he does mention that a devotee indirectly is mentioning, you don't have to worry about it. Whether a devotee is born in a poor family, a devotee is born uh, in a rich family, a devotee is born at, at an inauspicious moment, if you see astrologically, Everything can change. Everything has to be considered as the arrangement of the Lord. All we have to do is simply take shelter of Krishna and be faithful. Because the moment we start depending on other things, that means to that degree we lack faith in Krishna. And as Krishna says, Ye yatha maam tam As you approach me, I reward you accordingly. If you have 10% faith, I'll reward you 10%. 50%, 50%. It's just a matter of faith. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki chai. Srimad Bhagavatam ki chai.